Hey there. Hi, it's Lori the Third. I was talking to you about that law of polarity. And I wanted to read to you right from the book here. Now, the law of polarity states that everything, and I mean everything, of, of consequence, right, has an opposite. It's a law. You can't fall six feet down and, from being only four feet up. And you can't turn left without coming from the right. And uh, yes, only exists because no does. So otherwise it'd be meaningless, right? So I really like this. I'm going to read a, a quote from uh, a man, uh, James E. Faust. The divine shepherd has a message of hope, strength, and deliverance for all. If there were no night, we would not appreciate the day. Nor could we see the stars and the vastness of the heavens. We must partake of the bitter with the sweet. There is a divine purpose in the ad adversities we encounter every day. They prepare, they purge, they purify, and thus they bless. So they're for our good, huh? Here's another one, right out of 1 Nephi 2.11. For it must needs be that there is an opposition in all things. If not so, my firstborn in the wilderness, righteousness could not be brought to pass. Neither wickedness, neither holiness, nor misery, neither good nor bad. Wherefore, all things must needs be a compound in one. So if that's the case, and polarity is a true law, what does this mean? If something is a little bit bad, then it is only a little bit good. If something is catastrophic, then there is within it something phenomenal. There's a concept to think about. Uh, opposite, equal, and opposite. Napoleon Hill, one of the most quoted authors there is out there, especially from the 20th century, every adversity, every failure, and every heartache carries with it the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit. Can you imagine? So, the worse it seems, the better it really is. You know, it's hard, sometimes that's hard to believe when we think of the, some of the things that we've gone through that are just catastrophic. Um, I believe that's one reason why the survivors of the Martin Hancock Company from Lesson, we talk, she talked about this in the book before, felt so privileged to have been a part of that group, the ones that survived it. And there's a story that's in the, the uh, scriptures about, it's the story of Gideon and the Midianites. And this is really amazing because it started out with 32,000 men in the army, okay? And Gideon was called to lead this army and conquer the Midianites. And um, he was, you know, I'm sure he was feeling pretty good because 32,000 is quite a lot of people, right? Uh, but you know what the Lord told him? The Lord told him, it's too many. You've got too many in your... In, send the ones who are fearful. Anyone who's afraid to be in battle, send them home. Can you imagine that? Send them home. Get them out. Get them out. Right? So, guess how many were left after that? 10,000. 10,000 were left. So, uh, but aren't sheer numbers like an advantage? But if you think about it, not if they're fearful. If they're spreading fear around to the others... No advantage there, right? Once again, the Lord said, even at 10,000, he had too many. <laughs> so amazing to me. Um, and the Lord knew that if they went to battle with a large army and won, that they would pat themselves on the back for conquering the foe themselves. God wanted them to know without a doubt that he was responsible for their victory. God wants your victory, and he wants you to know that you couldn't have done it without him. If the task is too easy, then when you conquer, you might think it was your strength alone that did the job. So the Lord told Gideon to take the men down through the water and have them get a drink. And some would actually bring the water to their mouth. They'd cup their hand and bring some in, right? And others would just bend down and drink right out of the water. And those that just bent down and put their mouth right into the water and drank, send them home. Send them all home. So, how many were left then? It's like, it's just crazy. It's like 300 or something. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, 300 were left at that point. But let me tell you this. They did succeed in what ended up happening with those 300. Not even one was injured. Not even one was killed. Um, they actually, uh, he had them take trumpets. Let me just read it here. 
Um, so he had them take their lamps inside their pitchers in one hand and a trumpet in the other. Upon Gideon's signal, they shouted together. Now, they also spread out around uh, kind of circumference the, uh, the, the army that they were going to be fighting against. And it was also nighttime, right? So imagine this. They're up all around, kind of spread out because there's only 300 of them. <laughs> and they've got their lamps in their pitchers and they've got their trumpets. And on his signal, they shouted together, broke their pitchers, and blew their trumpets in the darkness. The groggy Midianites saw and heard all the commotion and ended up confused and fought themselves and ended up fleeing. Some of them fleed away and, and most were fighting with each other. So he had conquered without a single one of his men even being wounded. Isn't that incredible? So, I would show unto the world that faith is things which are hoped for and not seen. Wherefore, dispute not because ye see not, for ye receive no witness until after the trial of your faith. So hear the words trial of your faith so in other words when we're in our darkest times we need to know that we're going to have the greatest thing coming our way and that he's always there for us and that he knows the very best way count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience and patience is a good thing so it's all good all things will work together for your good it might seem bad but know that by this law of polarity, it is good too. Think about that part of it, and what you desire will continue towards you. So think about the positive side. Understand that with polarity, think of only good, and the, the things that you desire will come to you. I just love that. And I hope that you'll put this into practice. Think about this law of polarity. When things go get really hard, get excited and know that there's something good coming, and that there's something you can learn from it. And, and guess what? Get rid of fear. You know, the little mean, those little soldiers in your head that are speaking fear to you. Or maybe, um, you know, just you've got to drive them out too. You've got to send them all out. Send them out. Because <laughs> you definitely don't need them. Even if there's just one voice inside your head that's saying, you can do this. If there's one voice inside your head saying, be happy and you're worth it and you're enough. That is so worth it to get rid of the millions of others that are shouting against you and are fearful. So I wish you the best of, uh, the best of everything, <laughs> and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.